Hello everyone, this is Mr. Gilmore, and I am unfortunately not going to be able to make it in this week uh, because I am still isolating. Um, and so I will be back next Monday when um, uh, my isolation is up, and so I will see you guys uh, when I return to school on January 10th. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is do some short introductions, talk about some class policy, um, talk about Canvas, and then I'll let you guys get to your assignment today. Um, so this is Academic Geometry Semester 2 uh, with Mr. Gilmore. Um, if you're in F205 right now, you're in the right place. Um, I'm going to go through some short introductions myself, talk about class policy, what to expect for the semester, and then um, jump over and look at what you're going to find on Canvas. If you had me last semester, then you know the routine. If you did not, not have me last semester, um, I hope that you learned the routine. And those who did have me, please help those who don't, who didn't have me. Um, it kind of explains some routine for them while I am not there. All right, so where to begin? Let's begin with myself. My name is Mr. Gilmore. If you'd like to call me by my rapper name, I go by Master G. I am married. Uh, my wife name, my wife's name is Lindsay. Uh, we do have four kids. We just had our fourth back in August, and so there's a family picture of all of us um, there together in our backyard. Um, I did graduate from Purdue. That's actually what kept me up here in the gr uh, great area of uh, Lafayette, West Lafayette. Uh, so love this area. Um, I do love math. I'm kind of a geek towards math. Um, I collect math textbooks. Um, in fact, I'm in my basement right now, and I can look at my shelf that's full of math textbooks. Um, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so if you want a really easy way to get me off topic, uh, just talk about something Star Wars related, and then I will um, get off topic very easily. Okay. Um, I also run a couple of different clubs at Harrison. If you're interested in joining, I run a gamers club. I run an esports club. I also run a cybersecurity club. So if you're interested in any of those, email me, and I'll get back with you um, about uh, what those entail. Okay, let's talk about safety. Um, if you're in the classroom right now, let's, let's go through all the drills. So the first drill is the evacuation drill, the fire drill. Um, what you're going to do is exit the room, go to the right, and then you're going to find all the way to the staircase. And you go all the way down the staircase to the four-language hallway or where you find the doors to Circle Drive. You'll exit out of those doors into Circle Drive, and that is where we go for evacuation. For severe weather, we're going to actually take that exact same path. We exit out the door, we go down the steps all the way to the four-language hallway, but we stay at the bottom, um, and we go down the four-language hallway. So instead of going out the doors, we go to the left, and we'll either hang out in the hallway or we'll find a classroom to go into. Uh, earthquake drill, we've already done this one already, but basically you just sit underneath the desk. That's it. Okay, um, and then lockdown drill. There's actually two types of lockdowns. There's a soft lockdown, which is um, there's no movement allowed in the hallways, um, but we are allowed to um, continue teaching in the classroom, and I will have the door locked and everything just in case. Um, but there's no movement allowed in the hallways. And then for the um, hard lockdown, that would be where we're hiding a corner, uh, which I have an orange bulletin board in the classroom. So find that orange bulletin board where it'll be in that corner. Uh, the lights will go off, the door will go locked, and I've got a little um, drape that will actually cover our window of the door uh, to prevent anyone looking in. Also, try to keep the aisles clear of any book bags or books or legs. Um, usually if students need to stand up and ask to the restroom, I don't want them tripping over everything. If I'm coming back and passing back some tests or assignments, um, I don't want to be tripping on any of those, those bags as well. Okay, class policy. Um, please be sure to check, I'll, I'll point this out on Canvas, but please be sure to check out the class policy on Canvas. Um, submit good information there for you to read um, for um, your sake as far as what my, ex, my classroom expectations are, but also kind of what um, the uh, breakdown of the grade grade will look like for each semester or for each quarter for the semester. Um, one big component for me is the effort, right? I really just look for people putting good effort into the class. So um, it's really important. That's the most important ingredient in this class is give me give me your best. I'd like to see what your, your effort is. Make sure you bring your materials to class, paper, pencil, Chromebook, notebook, um, textbook, calculator, answers. Uh, we actually will be using our calculator more often this semester. So be sure to make sure you have that. Uh, be in your seats ready when the bell rings. Um, otherwise, I will count you tardy. Okay, so... Um, Make sure you're here, um, and then also be respectful and kind at all times. And I really do mean at all times, not just in my classroom, but in the hallways, at lunch, outside the building, all right, in your neighborhood, at work, wherever you may find yourself. Be kind and respectful. I'm a firm believer that kindness always wins. Okay, kindness always wins. Um, what does it? What does respect, uh, respectful uh, kindness really look like in the classroom? Well, here are the things that you should not do. Um, don't talk and interrupt while others are talking. No crude, rude, or lewd language, jokes, comments, questions, slang, hand gestures, name calling, etc. I had a student a couple years ago tell me the one of the just uh, raunchiest jokes I've ever heard. Uh, let's no, I don't want to hear those. Okay, um, and you don't really need to be telling those either. So just. Keep those to yourself. Uh, don't be distracting to others. No surfing the web, texting, note passing. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys do note passing anymore? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, no fighting, shoving, tripping, wrestling, hitting, scratching, poking. I'm not an elementary school teacher. 
but, but I want I need to say those, right? All right, keep your hands to yourself, all right? All right, integrity. This is a hard class. I think you've learned that from first semester. semester second semester is going to do the same thing to you. It's, it, we're going to be seeing all sorts of different new material. Uh, we'll still be studying triangles a lot, but we're going to be, um, real, I'm really pushing you. So I'm, I'm asking you to be integrable, um, to have integrity. Uh, it, integrity means doing the right thing when, when no one else is looking. So I'm hoping that you guys do the right thing, um, even when no one else is looking, because it's going to be, you're, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for you to cheat. And I'm asking you to take the higher road. Now, I'm a big Star Wars fan. And so I put together a list of some examples of cheating that I've seen, but I've titled them with respect to the titles of the nine Star Wars films. Um, so, for example, The Phantom Answer. Um, I always love this one. So The Phantom Answer is when student gives me a um, answer to a solution, and it's the correct answer, but there's no work to back it up, right? Um, where'd that answer come from, right? How did, how did you know that? That was the right answer. Uh, so I'll be looking for work, um, especially this semester. We'll see a lot more computation. Attack of the Snap, right? I've actually gotten students who will finish their homework, take a picture of it with the Snapchat, and send it to all their friends so all their friends can finish the homework. Don't do that, okay? Revenge of the Past, um, I've had some students um, who will actually contact um, either an older sibling or a student who has already taken the class, and they'll get all the extra, they'll get all the, the work that that student has done, all past homework assignments and tests. Don't do that, okay? Um, it's your turn to take the class, and you're going to do it on your own. A new scope. Um, so, for example, in this one, I've seen this happen where a student, um, they don't turn in their, any of their homework. Um, it's, just, it's just sloppy work that does get turned in. It's poor quality. All of a sudden, they get the test, and they get 100% on the test. Now, how in, in the world did you get that 100% on the test, right? That's a little fishy to me. Uh, it turns out that student was caught cheating, uh, and they, they did end up having um, – some consequences for that. Uh, the blatant copy strikes back. Um, this is an obvious one where I've caught students just sitting there in class blatantly copying off of each other, right? Um, return to the bathroom. This is one of my favorite. Uh, it's always starting a test, right? So I had the student one time get up uh, or sitting there to test and I could just tell they had just had no idea what they were doing. Well, anyway, the student says, hey, man, go to the bathroom, Mr. Grimmel. I said, sure. I said, sure. So they go to the bathroom. They come back, and all of a sudden, it was like an a epiphany happened in the bathroom. Um, they just started to write everything, and they get all this, this, these answers and stuff like that. As it turns out, they went to the bathroom with their phone. Um, they looked up stuff on their phone when they were in the bathroom. And then, of course, there's their epiphany when they get back. All right, I love that one. <coughs> Okay, um, the Ask Before Awakens, I always get this one sometimes, where you have a class who just took a test, and then the following class is, has some of their friends in it. Well, all of a sudden, you know, the, the friends walk in, they're sitting down, and a kid asks me a question, an exact question that appears on the test. And I'm thinking, how in the world do you know to ask that question right before the test starts, right? How in the world? Well, it's because your friend told you, and that's cheating, okay? All right, this is this is for you and you alone, right? We're not having our friends help with this one. Uh, the last ditch, this is an obvious one, um, just a last ditch effort of cheating. I've caught some kids right in the middle of a test, um, pulling out their phones or, or looking at uh, the neighbor's copy. Um, that's not good. That's cheating. And then rise of the smartphone. You know, kids are getting creative nowadays on how to hide their smartphone. You know, sometimes it's in between their laps, sometimes it's balancing out of their pocket, sometimes it's sitting right there on the, in their book bag. Kind of book bag's open, but their phone is open inside the book bag. Yeah, so we're just going to put that, that smartphone away, okay? Um, now, how do we then, uh, how do I, what do I look forward then to, um, to, uh, to get around this cheating, right? What am I looking for? I'm looking for you to show your work, right? If you show your work, then great. I know that you aren't cheating, um, and I'm not going to be suspecting of you cheating. Uh, you know, I look for the good in people first, um, but um, please, I, I am asking you to be integrable. Uh, take the higher road, right? Do the right thing even when no one else is looking, right? And one of the ways you can show me that is to show a work, okay? All right, um, you will be submitting your homework online. Uh, however, when you do, I still need to be able to read that, which means please make sure you have organized your submission. Um, you will have a – you'll have a, a – a, copy of the worksheet as well, which means you'll have places to put your solutions, places to put your answers in. Uh, but please make sure it's well written, uh, that it's still organized, that I can that I can read it uh, and maintain it. There's over 100 of you guys that I have to grade through, so please be sure that um, uh, you are helping me and also helping yourself by keeping your handwriting neat and organized. That way I can go through and read it. And you just get a couple examples, some good examples, bad examples of, of just what it looks like to have neat handwriting and something that I can actually read through. Um, here's some free advice. After this, I'm going to have to start charging you. It's going to be $30 a question. I'm just kidding, right? I got to make money somehow, though. No, I'm kidding. Um, so participate fully on a daily basis, which means engage in class, right? Um, ask questions. That's always a good thing. Um, complete all assignments on time, attempting every problem assigned. We'll talk more about homework when I get back into the classroom. And those who um, have me first semester know my policy on homework. Um, and so if you guys can help share that 
that information with those who didn't have me first semester, that would be great. Um, but I will I will review my uh, classroom policy on homework uh, when I'm back in the classroom with you guys. Uh, never turn in work that isn't your own. We talk about cheating, right? So don't don't you know this is for you, right? To help you you grow. So make sure you um, get that that um, turned in. That's your own work. Uh, be in class regularly, uh, which means. Um, Try not to miss math class, all right? If you have a doctor's appointment, dentist appointment, orthodontist appointment, try to schedule that during other classes. I'm not saying I don't care about your other classes, but I am saying I don't care about your other classes because I want you to, right? Math, we do something every day. It stacks. It, it um, So you got to make sure you are with me. Don't don't miss class regularly. Uh, contribute to class. Again, I've talked about this. Make sure you are engaged, um, taking notes. Um, Ask questions, answer my questions, um, take notes, right? Be, be a full participant. Don't just come to exist, right? Come, Don't just come to live in my class, but thrive in my class. And then make sure you're asking questions, right? Um, I don't know who hurt you in the past by asking questions, but um, I love questions. So please ask me questions, all right? And so um, it is question time, which means if you're sitting in class, you're working on the assignment, and you have questions for me, great, email me, all right? I'll be home. I'll have access to my email. So please be sure to contact me. I'll get back with you as soon as possible. Um, what I'd like to do now is hop over to Canvas for a second and take a look at what we're going to find there. So on Canvas, let me bring that up for us. Um, this is our homepage for the academic geometry course. So I should say it's active geometry semester two um, is what you're looking for. You have this little picture of a circle with an inscribed pentagon inside of it with the then the, the triangle formed with inside that. Um, you're in the right place. Down below, we have a course navigation. I like to use pages to organize our information for Canvas. Um, one thing you'll you'll see is that we're going to try to cover ch uh, seven chapters uh, this semester, chapter seven all the way to chapter 13. Um, these last couple chapters are, are nice short ones to kind of finish off the semester. Um, and then we will look at, at reviewing for our semester two final um, this um, for, for semester two. Um, you also see that I've got pages broken down as far as um, proofs. So I'll actually be working on uploading proofs to Canvas, um, our definitions, postures, theorems that we've been using, and also some new ones we'll encounter this semester. I've uploaded those there. Um, then this is one uh, link that you want to make sure you take a look at the syllabus class policy. And in the syllabus class policy, you'll find uh, more information about what to expect for class and everything like that. So make sure you read through that. Uh, I need to update my welcome letter. Uh, I just got the information on our pinch conferences, so I'll update that in the welcome letter, and your parents can check that out, or you can um, show your parents that for when uh, the time comes for parentage conferences. Um, one thing you're going to be seeing today is you're going to be going to Chapter 7. So let me go ahead and open that for us. In Chapter 7, I have it broken down per section. So each section um, has several columns that are associated with it. You've got the lesson notes for that section, the video notes, the worksheet, the assignment, and then the answer sheet. And yes, we will talk about uh, the answer sheet. I actually do upload those so you guys can take a look at those. Um, so your first assignment is actually the Simplifying Radical Expressions, um, which um, is what the sub is going to be talking to you guys about. You will um, do one of two things. Really, I encourage you to click on the 7.0 video notes that's going to take you over to YouTube, and it's going to be a lecture or pre-recorded lecture of me going through those lecture notes, the 7.0 uh, um, PowerPoint presentation, and we'll do the examples together with that. Then you should get a hard copy of the worksheet, uh, and you'll be working on that uh, to submit for me. And when it does come to some when it does come time to submit, you will upload that to Canvas. And so what you'll do is you'll click on the 7.0 homework assignment. That will actually take you over. I'm going to go ahead and do that. That'll actually take you over to the assignment. Now, it's different on my end than on your end. Like if I go to student view, um, you will see the submission little button. Yeah, start assignment at the top. You'll click on that. It'll ask you to upload a file. Um, you'll then have to figure out what's the best way for you. Are you going to... Um, to take a picture of that, upload to your Google Drive to access that file. My suggestion would, or maybe you want to use the school scanners, I should say. You can go to school scanners and, and scan in your assignment uh, and then upload it that way. Um, you can actually scan it right to your Google Drive and upload it that way. Or uh, my suggestion is to go to your phone, download the Canvas app. There's a Canvas student app that's free. You can take a picture of it within the app, and it will upload it right then and there for you. Um, so it, basically, you go to the assignment, you click on Upload. It asks you, hey, can we access your camera? You're like, yeah, that's one of my options. I'll access my camera. Take a picture of the front and back of the worksheet, and then you can submit that for me. All righty. So that is it. That's all I have for my short introductions. Um, if Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. But I will be back January 10th. That's our Monday next week. All right. I look forward to meeting you guys. All right. Take good care of yourselves. Be good and do good.